So, I would like to introduce uh, observers in this course. First of all, I would like to introduce Vadhvaji. Uh, Anup Vadhvaji is uh, associated with IIT Delhi or we are working together on this uh, automation education and uh, idea is basically to have more and more people aware of this and they can start this kind of a course in their institutions. So, Vadhvaji is basically alumnus of IIT Delhi and from where he completed his bachelor in electrical in 1975 and because of his passion and interest for automation we get associated and then I think I would like to introduce our first observer Sri Anu Vadhvaji. He had a, a very rich experience in the industry uh, and you have seen that in this course most of the lectures we plan from industry. So, that you will get the state of art knowledge, it is not something limited somewhere. So, basic things, fundamental concepts I will be covering as a part of a teaching of this course and then we try to incorporate more and more state of art information and technologies which are available in automation. So, that is the reason we plan most of the lectures from people coming from industry. Our second observer is also alumnus of IIT Delhi, uh, Sri Rajiv Sajdevaji. He is also with us today and he will be there throughout this course to see uh, or to work as an observer uh, in this course. He has a very rich experience in instrumentation controls and automation. So, we have two quite experienced people sitting in this room right now and uh, uh, just guiding us throughout this course and helping us in improving the course further. Fine. So, this is all about the observer then for all your help uh, I would like to thank my all students and project staff who are basically on the job from last 10 days, 15 days and I would like to give their mobile numbers to you. So, in case you need any kind of help please note down these numbers. So, I have already circulated Faiz Iqbal's number uh, in mail to you and I am sure he might be helping you to reaching this room till now. Uh, so, Faiz Iqbal is taking care of overall responsibilities of coordination. Transport because those who are coming from out of the campus, those who are staying in IIT uh, they can come walk through in the campus only and those who are coming from outside you can though we have arranged a vehicle for that but you can contact Dinesh for that, you can just write down the number in case there is a delay in getting the vehicle or not coming time in time. Uh, I have already placed a TA bill form in, in your bags, please fill it today positively. So, they will start the process of reimbursement and then reimbursement, uh, reimburse it next within 3-4 days. So, Zafar is uh, taking responsibility of that, you please attach all your tickets. Uh, fill the TA bill form and then give it to Zafar. Zafar will collect it. Right? So, write down the number of Zafar in case if you are not able to find him around. Then Faiz is taking care of all hospitalities. Uh, if you feel any uh, problem or if there is any concern, you can just express to him. Dilshad Khan is here. Uh, he is a PhD student uh, with me. He will be taking care of the attendance uh, in this course and all quizzes that we are conducting in this course. I will come to the quiz matter later, but he is responsible for having that. Fine. So, with this uh, uh, very brief introduction about this course, uh, I would like to start the first session of this course, say so, introduction to the industrial automation. See the idea of having this course and sharing information with you is that uh, you should also have sim similar kind of initiative in your institutions. How many of you are running this kind of a course in for undergraduates or postgraduates? Can I have those people? 5, 6, 7, 8. So, you are already having a course on uh, automation, industrial automation and especially for undergraduates or postgraduates? Undergraduate. I would say mechatronics, mechatronics, okay. So, it is good, but uh, still I am able to see that uh, quite a, a large number there this kind of a course is not there. Let me share my own experience about this uh, course and learning about this course. I have not gone through a course on industrial automation during my any of the degrees, neither B.Tech nor M.Tech nor PhD. See idea is that when we start working in a domain of a experimental research, there I realize that there is a still a 
chunk of information that is not made available to me during the normal learning. And that is the motive and initiative when I joined in 2007 in IIT Delhi to start this course especially for students, undergraduates and then especially M Tech and PhD students. So, they will be familiar with the technologies, they can use these technologies for building their own setups, machines, whatever they want for conducting research. So, it starts from lack of this domain when I was a student and then I initiated that I have taken to propagate this information further and today I am very fortunate that I am spreading and sharing this information with all of you in this room and with a hope and expectation that you will also initiate this kind of a uh, education in your institutions, right. So, that is the uh, main motive and passion and interest basically I have for this particular subject which is on industrial automation, right. So, uh, I will try to cover basics of fundamentals of automation in this course through my four lectures I have scheduled uh, in this uh, uh, course and rest of the uh, introduction about different technologies is from people from industry. So, topics I will like to cover in this course, some of them are covered through me, some of them are covered through experts from industry, those who are directly handling with these technologies. Okay. So, I would like to introduce you with uh, automation technologies, why there is a need for automation. So, a brief <coughs> discussion. So, we will have this session more like an interactive session. I would like you to interact more, do some hands on that is most important part in the automation learning. Uh, you cannot just learn automation by just reading a book, it is not possible, right. So, hands on is basically playing a major role and that is the reason we have uh, all sort of labs possible in this course and I would like you to do some hands on exercises in this room also, right. So, uh, then I will briefly introduce to the fluid power technologies, uh, pneumatics and hydraulics. Then I would like you to design some of the basic circuits because that is something give you a lot of confidence, right. Just looking at the symbols, just looking at the circuits, just understanding the functionality is not going to help you. So, I want you to practice some kind of a circuit design in this course that I will be helping you and guiding you through this course. And then basic, we start with the basic pneumatic and hydraulics and then slowly we will move on to the electro pneumatics because then the electrical part come into picture. And finally, we will be moving towards the PLCs and the motion control, right. So, that is the basic idea. So, briefly whatever we try to touch upon in this duration of 5 days, we will try to have that. Uh, very good uh, session and lecture is planned on sensors. So, uh, I have uh, experts from industry that is a German company, Pepperell and Fuchs, they will be taking a complete uh, lecture on this sensors, various type of sensors and then we will have a lab session also on the sensor. So, you will get familiar with the different type of sensor options available. Right? Then we are inviting an expert from uh, uh, outside IIT who will take a lecture on process automation because what we are talking mostly as a mechanical engineer are manufacturing automation. We are dealing with manufacturing automation technologies and there is a parallel uh, stream or a branch of automation where people are working on process automation. The variables change the technology changes, how you will be sensing, how you will be controlling. So, that is an a specialized subject we will be covering under uh, process automations. Lot of tools available for simulations nowadays because before we would, uh, implement a physical uh, system, you can simulate the circuit functionalities, you can check whether system is going to work or not. So, we will just introduce you with the different automation simulation tools available and uh, we have a, a expert from Festo, he will be giving a session on uh, simulations and we will also conduct a lab where you will be yourself doing simulation of the pneumatic and hydraulic circuits. Right? Then uh, we have a motion control uh, person coming from outside who will introduce you to the different types of motions and how it can be generated, how it can be controlled uh, with the different options available uh, in the market right now. Then uh, visualization more on SCADA and networking. Uh, people from person from Siemens is coming for uh, this particular lecture. And finally, we have a PC based controllers and, and more uh, it is not no more looks like a uh, that we uh, we are happy with a logical controllers. Nowadays, you require a more exhaustive controller 
and that is basically we call automation controller. It is not just logic, it is it's some kind of an emotional interface, some kind of a uh, HMI interface. So, that, that part is covered uh, by again from a people from industry that is Parker. They will be talking about Parker and Beckhoff, they will be talking about programmable automation controller. So, that is what the bouquet I have uh, made uh, based on my own understanding, learning and experience and what I want you to understand and learn from this course. Right? So, that is the uh, uh, complete idea about this 5 days extensive course. So, before uh, I move on further, uh, I would like to take you this to this slide which I always like to share with you because automation I always see in this fashion. So, we start with a uh, uh, awareness because most of the courses you find that you will get aware and familiar with the different options technologies. Sometimes whenever you visit exhibitions, you will get some information. So, some kind of awareness has been created about the subject. Then after that, we will be trying to give some knowledge about the subject where you will be uh, learning little bit deep and then get some kind of an expertise in this domain. And the last part is very important that I would like to highlight in this course is implementation. See, without implementation automation learning I should say is 40 percent. If you just learn the things in this room and go away from here and you will not practice for next, it is it's I think uh, same as any programming language. You learn the programming syntaxes from a book, if you are not applying it somewhere, if you are not writing a real time program somewhere or working on a projects, you will not be learning those programming languages. Same thing hold true with the automation learning as well. So, implementation is a big part that is what I said 60 percent I keep it for implementation. Unless you are get capable to design yourself, make things functional, working and able to debug the problems with the system, your learning is incomplete. Right? So, that is I always say that so implementation is the last stage and I would like to cover a big part of implementation in this course as well. So, that is the thought knowing is not enough, we must apply and then you get a willingness to do after this course, but then you have to do. So, we must do it. So, that is most important part. So, I would suggest you please start working in some areas of do, uh, this automation as a part of a research student project or something or something you can incorporate in your research activities and parallelly you should think about uh, teaching automation. Right? So, that is the whole idea. Uh, hands on if we uh, just have a look at this. So, we will have a lab session on pneumatics and electronomatics that is scheduled for today. So, in the evening uh, we will have one and a half hour session for this. So, whatever I will cover in uh, basic pneumatics and electronomatics, you will be doing a lab in the evening. Right? Then we will have a lab, on, uh, lab session on sensors that is Pepper and Fuchs will be conducting tomorrow. Then there are certain demos to give you a uh, complete idea. So, integrated automation demo has been scheduled and planned with the help of people coming from outside through Siemens, Pepperell and Fuchs and BNR automation. So, they will give you a, a, a live demonstration of certain technologies and, and lab session on PLC, I, I, I skipped that. So, we will have a lab session on PLC. I want everyone in this course to get equipped with a basic understanding about PLC. They themselves will be able to write some kind of a program and execute it. So, that much learning I, 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 I myself promise to teach you in this next 5 days. So, after uh, you will not be afraid of PLCs and PACs after doing this course. So, we will have a complete lab session on PLC scheduled for I think day after tomorrow. And then uh, lastly uh, is a automation controller. So, there is a demonstration from uh, Parker uh, in this course on the last day. Right? So, the, I want you to go through this kind of an hands on learning in this course. I myself initiated a award in this course, I will give a best learner award in this course at the end of the day. So, at the end of 5 days, I have announced this award, one for those who are from T cube institutions and those are from QIP. So, one for T cube, one for QIP and for that I will be assessing you time to time uh, during this course and out of that assessment, whoever comes out to be first, I will be giving an award in the last day, right? just to give some motivation to you to get this award. Fine. And for that you should aware of this red button. 
So, <laughs> we, we have this red button in some of the slides where I will ask you to do something hands on in this class and then in the lab also we will just get evaluate yourself. So, this quiz is there wherever I have a quiz Dilshad is sitting over here he will be distributing a sheet of paper to all of you. You will write your name uh, on the sheet and then whatever we will be discussing whatever I will be requesting you will be just attempting on that sheet. So, at the end of a session I will be collecting those sheets. Briefly, I would like to introduce uh, to the automation lab. Uh, we will have all our labs uh, in block 3 252A and, and thanks to uh, Professor Kale, head of the department uh, mechanical engineering to give a much bigger space for having this session in this course uh, because earlier we are having a small lab facility we can, where we cannot accommodate 40 people. So, we recently uh, worked on this space from last 10, 15 days and shift all our equipments in this lab. So, basically we have hardwares uh, on pneumatic trainers, electro pneumatic trainers, we have PLCs from uh, Rockwell as well as Siemens and uh, then we have motion control uh, components that is servo drives, motors and VFDs, remote IO panel and HMI. So, these are the hardwares that we have in the lab. Some of you yourself will be working in this course and some of you are just observing because we will be giving demonstration and you will be just because we do not have time enough that you can do hands on on those advanced technologies fine. But later on you can think on you can work on those things. Softwares that we will be using in this course uh, and that I used to uh, get student familiar with these kind of softwares in my uh, course are basically fluid simulation softwares from Festo and we have an automation studio uh, where we can simulate the complete system in this course. And then uh, Rockwell automation software for PLC programming. So, we will be uh, working on these softwares in this course. Right? Just quickly have a look through on these. Uh, this is Micrologics 1100 PLC. Uh, it is from Allen Bradley we have in the lab. Then we connect this with a uh, electro pneumatic uh, platform that is plate where you can build electro pneumatic circuits and then you can control with the help of PLCs. This is advanced PLC, it is a compact logic so or we can call it an uh, automation controller uh, where we have an HMI also, you can build your own screens and then motion controls fine. So, that is what I just try to cover during this course. I am just showing next few slides basically to give you an idea about having this course uh, for undergraduate and postgraduate. Uh, so, I would like to uh, take you through that and after that I will be having a a template of this course. So, those who are interesting interested for this kind of a course they can collect it uh, later on fine. So, I will be having the complete course description the lectures whatever we are doing in the IIT. So, on the same pattern you can even initiate in your institute fine. So, I will just take you through uh, how to teach automation and what you can cover in your institute. So, for teaching automation we have these objectives I am just sharing the same objectives which we set ourselves for the IIT. So, then you can just take from here and then you can initiate the similar activities at any stage wherever you find that you need our help or my help I am always there to support you fine. So, in this case the course should focus on understanding various components of state of art. See automation is a subject where you cannot teach 10 year old technology. It is getting obsolete so fast that you have to keep yourself ready for getting new information, new knowledge about the system. So, that is what we always say state of art and this state of art keep on changing. 40, 50 years back state of art is something different and in 2020 state of art will be different right. So, we will have to you have to keep updated ourselves. So, we will always try to cover and that is the reason in the last 7 years what I taught to the students I think 30, 40 percent students find everything new in the next semester they never find the same course from 2007 to 2014 as it is, the, the, the slides are not matching. So, that is the reason that uh, you have to keep a brush off these technologies. So, from now onward you always look about the term automation and wherever you get this kind of enforcement try to assimilate it, get it and then work on it. So, try to cover various components of state of art automation technologies in modern manufacturing industry because this is this course I am running as a uh, in a mechanical engineering stream. So, I am more focused on manufacturing automation 
fine. And so that is what I have mentioned that is in modern manufacturing industries, right. And then it introduced to the practical methods of automatic control of machines, process and systems. So that is what uh, has to be covered uh, during this course. And all major part of modern industrial control system will be described and their principle explained. So the objective should be framed like this that uh, whoever do this course will get familiar with these kind of technologies. When I come to the content of the course, uh, you can have uh, the same thing I will be sharing with you in a template. So uh, you can just later refer it. But this is what uh, basic uh, course content that we are covering in this course. So introduction about the automation technologies, uh, different uh, applications in a manufacturing type of systems, mechanical, electrical and electronics. Then sensors, uh, there are a lot of sensors uh, in used in uh, manufacturing automation. Then basics of hydraulics and pneumatics. So uh, it is not just awareness, it is basically give you skills and the knowledge to design these systems. Fine. So uh, that is what I have just included at circuit design approach and examples, then sequence operations of two or more cylinders. Then hydraulic, after that you come to the electro pneumatics and electro hydraulics. Uh, so uh, then same kind of a logic design how we can do with the electrical components. And then you can slowly move on to the advanced uh, technologies that is PLCs. So when we say PLCs, you should know how to make circuits using PLC what connection you have to make and then how to program those PLCs, right. So that part, so programming is also a very important part of because otherwise you are just knowing PLC as a black box, you will not understand that. So it is very important that you should under understand the interfaces to the PLC and at the same time you will be able to write programs on the PLC, right. Then uh, human machine interface uh, a much more important uh, element in the all kind of an automation systems. Uh, because you need some interface basically through which a user can interact with the automated system and HMIs are a part of that. So human machine interface, uh, the software required for that, uh, what kind of a user interface you can think of for a particular application. So that part is there and then SCADA, uh, a much more extensive technology for visualization and control basically. Then uh, motion control, without motion control automation cannot be completed. So motion control plays a very important role. If you see any machine, uh, we will cover slowly when we discuss about the introduction on automation. Movement is one key uh, thing that is required in all automated systems. So how you will get those motions, how, how to control that, what options are available for having those motion control and then how we can have coordinated motion. So that is another uh, part that you can learn in this code. So then slowly from a basic motor control to the multi-axis coordinated motion and finally to the CNC control and that is how things can be covered. And then later on if time permits you can include some more advanced topics and these advanced topics can be upgraded uh, in every semester or in the coming years. So you can introduce to the RFID technology because that is more commonly used nowadays in the assembly lines. Uh, so automation nowadays have RFID technologies and machine vision and control applications. So, so these kind of advanced topics can also be included. So this is all content and, and if you see the, the uh, slide that I have shown you, uh, some part of all this course content I have covered in this 5 days, may not be that extensively that in deep, but I would like to touch upon most of the basic things. So they will get familiar with these terms. Right? Whenever you have uh, this kind of a course. Uh, in your institution, you can think of a, a major block divisions in this way as I used to do. So you can start with a basic pneumatics and hydraulic understanding, you start with that and then slowly you introduce to the electro pneumatics and the electrical part now come into picture because uh, how many of you are from electrical background? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's still majority is from mechanical. So we always start with a mechanical system. So that then it is easy to switch over to the electrical uh, controls. So you can introduce the electrical controls later on. So start from a basic pneumatic hydraulics, later you can incorporate or include the uh, electrical control part. So that comes basically the electro pneumatics and electro hydraulics and later uh, control part we are giving more to the con computers or controllers. So there comes PLCs and PACs. So that way you can divide this whole course uh, uh, 4 months or 5 months semester that you are having in 3 parts. And you can slowly take the students from a basic understanding of a mechanical system to the fully controllable system. Right? So that is the idea that you can have this. 
labs as I mentioned it, the same thing what I am just conducting <coughs> during this course, the same thing you can have uh, for your own students. So, you can have labs on all these kind of systems, so they get familiar with, they can do hands on learning because as I mentioned that it is very important the day you have lectures same in the same week they are able to do experiments. So, then whatever uh, you will be covering in the class they will be able to correlate physically how the system is working. So, labs are very important. So, you can have labs on pneumatic control, electro pneumatic controls, PLCs, PACs and motion control and then you can use different softwares basically. So, they, they will get familiar with uh, the technologies or the options available for uh, programming and simulation. Right? So, that is all about uh, basic uh, teaching of automation codes. So, so, any query here I am happy to uh, take and I am sharing the same template with you those who are interested they can initiate this kind of activity in their institutions. Right? So, with this I will start with the introduction uh, part. So, <coughs> now Dilshad you please circulate the seats because we have some red buttons on this slide, uh, we will do that. Uh, we first need to understand basically the, the automation uh, need, why, why we are here to learn this technology, uh, what is so fascinating about this that we are trying to learn this and I, I am sure that you all of you have some kind of an interest to learn these technologies. Right? So, we can just start with a, a discussion on these three topics that I have listed, need of automation, objectives to be achieved and automation in manufacturing. Right? So, what you have to do basically you have to write three points against each whatever you feel, whatever you understand that why there is a need of automation because once you learn this definitely you will be implementing at certain stage. So, before that you should have a question why, why it is required. It is not that I am pushing automation everywhere where it is even it is not required I can just do the automation for fancy things, no. You should have some understanding why automation is required and then after that you can just write down <coughs> two, three points what you are trying to achieve with automation, fine. One, you, once you have to define a need then you have to just uh, write two, three points uh, what objectives you are going to achieve with this and then give some example of automation in manufacturing, where you have seen or where you think that there is a need of automation in manufacturing, right. So, that part, so, so first red button is here, you can just do it in next five minutes. Try to write more practical things. So, that is better basically. So, let us not take out the book knowledge over here, let us try to be uh, more open for the practical knowledge and practical understanding. So, need of automation uh, I think let us take first uh, one and I would like to just list out over here. Uh, when I say uh, need of automation, uh, <coughs> can I have some options here? Yeah. Sir, actually to avoid any type of uh, I mean uh, jugglerys of the circuitry, you uh -huh. can have the compact size of the that circuit having this automation. No, but, like but circuits are there only when someone thinks about automation. Let us see when there is no circuit, nothing around it. Yeah. So, then why you need? Suppose if you have a, a system uh, working mechanically perfectly fine, why you need to introduce automation in the system? Faster. So, first the is the so speed. Or, or I should say, uh, quality output will be there. Just, just, just talk about one point. I think we'll take productivity. productivity. Second. So increased quality. So increased quality. Of quality, uh, yeah. So repeatability. Quality. Third, repeatability. Yes. Accuracy will be there. It will re reduce the human efforts. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Reduce human efforts. If you mass production, in the hard hard condition, mm -hmm. automation or any machine can survive. The conditions where human cannot work, basically harsh conditions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any any more points? Reduce cost. Cost reduce. Cost. cost yeah. Uh, so, production cost. 
it will eliminate uh, skill dependencies. Okay. Correct. But why you want to eliminate skill dependency? Too much. It is difficult to get error free operations. Or difficult to get trained people. Trained people. Hmm. Any more point? Good. So, now just complete, I think you have done that. <coughs> so, I think you mixed up uh, objectives and the need. <laughs> so, can, can we, uh, if I just take an, any, any practical example, uh, suppose if I have a manufacturing plant and I am running that without automation and suppose you approached me as a as an automation engineer I should say. How can you convince me that there is a need of an automation in my system? Yeah. Sir, if uh, we are presently running with a huge human based task force, uh -huh. there are a number of issues in terms of like my dear friends mentioned, mm -hmm. in terms of accuracy precision, mm -hmm. in terms of deliverability. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I expect my company to work 24 7 365, but mm -hmm. unfortunately due to strikes, due to salary hike, mm -hmm. this, that, there mm -hmm. are a number mm -hmm. of issues related to human. Mm -hmm. At times there is a variation in the raw material those things are actually delaying my process in terms uh -huh. of time due to accidents uh -huh. because humans are prone to error. So, you, you mean that human are problem in the system, so we want to no, eliminate them human, and, nothing is and have automation? Because uh -huh. for this automation as well, I need a human, uh -huh. I need an automation expert Correct. to automate my So, system. once an expert design a system, then you need not to have human around? Uh, then I need to ma manage and maintain this automated system, then I need a highly skilled labor to continue with this uh, uh -huh. highly automated system. Good, I think some of the good points. We will have a, a very good discussion on uh, human and machines, we will come later on. Uh, fine, to eliminate some kind of an, a human delays and errors basically, that is what you mean. Fine. And, and then uh, objectives basically what you have a need identified would like to fulfill those things. That is how, that is why that you have mentioned all these points are related uh, with that. When you say quality, how quality get improved with the automation? So, close dimensional tolerance, dimension tolerance. Close dimensional tolerance can be. So, you have a better controllers, better control systems that will help you in achieving the required tolerances and accuracy. Definitely harsh condition is where we are human cannot work basically we will have those options available. Fine. Uh, when we talk about automation in manufacturing, uh, can you give some example? Like CNC, CNC, machine. CNC machine is one <coughs> good example of automation. Robotics. Robotics. Welding. Bottling plant. Automation with welding. Bottling plant. Yeah. Packaging. Fine. Coordinate measuring machine. Coordinate measuring machine. AGV. AGV. So, you, you are naming all machines around. Definitely, in some in form, they are automated. In biomedical field. Biomedical? Biomedical field nowadays automation very, very much required. And uh -huh. so many uh, uh, biomedical machines are there which are based on the concept of automation. Like Correct. So, controls. Uh, uh -huh. Concept or like MEMS uh, technology. Fine. It's it's good. Nano machines. So, nano even uh, my refrigerator, oven, and uh, uh -huh. washing machine. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Welcome to that. It's good. Uh, so, I, I assume that you have a, a basic understanding about need of automation and what you are trying to do with the automated technologies. So, next uh, task is basically uh, to check your knowledge about the system that you are talking about. So, I'm, I will be showing some of the videos to you, what you have to do and then write down in your sheet uh, two, three operations that you can see in that video. So, can you just identify those operations? You just mentioned that auto, uh, indexing, suppose an operation is indexing, some other operation you might have seen that. So, try to identify uh, two, three operations in the system. Try to identify some sensors and actuators that you can see in the video, fine. So, that is something I would like to show you one by one. So, first one I will show you a juice filling and sealing machine, fine. So, you have to now identify uh, what operation this system is doing, this machine is doing. And then what sensors you can see during the video and the purpose, basically it is good if you just write some uh, two, three words about the purpose of that sensor. And then actuators, where you can see the actuators are there in the system. So, let me start with the, the first one.
it will just stop here. I think you have seen a uh, good part of it. Now, can you just uh, identify some of the operations that you have seen in this uh, video? Please just write down, uh, you just write down juice filling and sealing machine and then just write 1, 2, 3 those operations. And then one or two sensors that you can identify in the system. <coughs> and actuators. So, this is basically awareness part uh, as I have mentioned in the uh, slide. The first part we are just trying to see how much you are aware about the automated systems and what components you understand, what components you can identify if you see any automated system around. Fine. Done? Good. So, I am not discussing, I am just moving to the next video. Uh, and this is a very good example of a automated and, and these machines are definitely fulfilling some of the objectives that we have identified earlier. Uh, we will just show you. How many of you are familiar with how your mobile phone circuit boards made? Any idea? One. Have you seen a PCB inside your mobile phone by chance? Fine. So, you, you find nowadays there are very small size components on the board and there are many and there are multi layer uh, boards and then you have components on both sides basically. And suppose if I have to have a 1 lakh mobile phones to be made in a day, how those components can be placed? Any idea? SMT. Uh, SMT. SMT is technology. What equipment you will use for uh, mounting that? A any idea what kind of technology will be there? <coughs> SMT, I understand there is a option available, but exactly a feel how it works. Suppose if you have to place a 1 millimeter resistance on PCB and there are thousand of resistance to be placed on a small PCB, what are the options available? Uh, no, phones are not made by lithography. Uh, it's a, it's a VL, uh, basically VLSI, 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 VLSI circuits. Yeah, it's not. I'm talking about a next level where you are assembling a, a board. Uh, those who are from electrical, can they enlighten us? Hot yeah. Blower. Yes. Yes. Hot blower. Just say it louder. Hot air blower, sir. Hot air blower. But how you place components? My you question is that how you place components? Yeah. You can Soldering is finally again how we are joining. So, before joining, you have to place the component. Fine? Any idea? No. I will show you uh, such an advanced machine uh, in this video. Try to see and then identify some of the components. Uh, so, this is a machine. Uh, these are known as chip shooters. They are placing a chips like they are shooting a chip on the board. You just see that. The placement speed is 20,000 components per hour. So now you can uh, open your mind the kind of a precision required, the kind of speed required for doing this kind of task. So this is the board now you see that. So components are there in these feeders. So components are in the form of a reel in these feeders. And then this is a head. Now if you see this is a mounting head. See that the speed is 20,000 CPH components per hour, 8 placement heads are there into this. See, it's picking and then placing. And before that, uh, doing some more operation, you need to identify that. So, there are feeders over here, it's picking the components. And before placing on the PCB, it's doing something. I just want you to identify that point. So 
some kind of uh, extreme automation you see here so this board has come now if you see that Now you get a feel or idea how how twenty thousand components per hour can be placed, and such as small components. You see here. It will show a more zoomed view of this. See now this is the way they are placing. And there are variety of components, different type of component, different form factor, different shapes. These are capacitors, if you can see that. There are different sockets. You see that ICs. and move forward so everything is in a very compact machine you see here now what exactly is this so what what exactly that scan is doing yeah see when you are placing 20000 components per hour you cannot afford to miss a single component while placement fine such as speed such a precision such a accuracy without error if you just missed a single resistance on the pcb it will it's not going to work so at the end of assembly soldering everything done assembled and you find a simple resistance get dropped even while picking and then placing if it get dropped in between then the board is not working fine there is a rejection fine so what exactly that station is doing in between is inspection it's checking whether the component has been picked or not before placing just verifying that fine so that verification is there and uh, what sensors and actuators can you identify just write down there <coughs> such a high speed see now you can see that the cnc is not moving at that speed the speed that this machines are moving so the requirement of motion is totally different so i think whether you have observed or not uh, it's written there linear motors linear motors has been used in this machines yeah, so we'll see that Uh, later when we discuss about servo motors one is giving rotary motion and another is a linear servos and so so these kind of technologies once you see these kind of equipment you should get fascinated and try to see what exactly is inside this machine and how they are working right such a kind of a precise motion speed required fine without error so this and the different uh, can anyone say what kind of actuator has been used in this machine for picking component pneumatic so so how it is picking that component vacuum, vacuum yeah so it's because it, their nozzles are there and then with the vacuum it's picking those components and placing it fine so then on and off of a vacuum so just picking and releasing so you have to have a fast on and off system that can do the task fine so it's again it's a extreme that i have shown you Uh, i am sure you might have written some of the sensors and actuators that you have seen in this machine would like to show you a production line just have a look at this and try to see some of the, because this is more related with manufacturing automation it's more related with manufacturing automation
you can see lot of actuators over here. Just try to identify some of them. Can you identify this small actuator here? What type of actuator it is? Just write down. Yeah. Just this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can see lot of uh, automated components around. So this is more close to basically a manufacturing system. Uh, uh, next one I just want to show a, a more modular processing stations. You can just have a look at this also. <coughs> Why I am showing you these videos is basically uh, these are common whenever you see uh, manufacturing automation requirements. These are some common tasks to be performed. Right. So, please identify some of the actuators in this. The last one activity, can you identify what exactly it is doing? And what exactly it is doing in the last station? But it is not dropping all in the same line. <coughs> so, it is basically segregating uh, on some basis. What, what is exactly that basis is? Color, right. So, so you can just identify some sensors over there. Good. I think I will just take these four examples. So, you have seen uh, quite a good uh, systems where you have seen uh, technology is working uh, and then you are able to identify certain operations, certain sensors and actuators into this, right. So, let us try to uh, question this common automation task in manufacturing. So, in all these systems that I have shown you, there are many things that are common. So, what exactly we are trying to learn and do in this case, one is basically the movement, the motion. Different types of motions are there at a different speed uh, they have to be performed. So, one is the movement. So, when we divide the whole automation task uh, into uh, two broad categories. One we say movements, some kind of movements are there, some kind of motions are there that has to be performed in all of the equipment that I have shown you. And the second is application of force and torque, fine. Right? So, force, application of force and motion, fine. Right? So, they, these are the two things we just divide that and then all lot of technologies that we will be going to learn is to do these two tasks only. How you will apply force or torque and how you generate the precise controlled motion. <coughs> so, uh, for this I have a next set of question for you and that is a quiz of this. You have to just draw a small <coughs> figure if you want or you can just write something how you will accomplish this. There are two different tasks I have identified over here. One is a linear movement of 150 millimeter, you have to 
design a system, we have to understand a system how it will work, which will generate a linear movement of 150 mm of a weight of 20 kg, of a weight of 20 kg and with repeatability of 100 micron, fine. So, you, you will be moving it within 100 micron every time you will be uh, positioning it within 100 micron. So, this is the first task, you have to identify what technology, what system you will be using in this case uh, for performing this particular task, you have to just write down that. You write whatever you feel, uh, what kind of a system you should have, you need to have motors, hydraulic actuators, pneumatic actuators, anything that you feel is suitable to perform this task or a combination of uh, different components. And then after that you have to identify lifting of 500 kg weight to 100 millimeter. See I am circulating a redundant sheet right now and there is a column in the end uh, where because as I have mentioned in one of my mail that we will be having last day uh, exhibition visit because it is a coincident or, or, or we, I should say we are fortunate enough to see all these systems live. So, there is an opportunity that we can all go there and because there is an industrial automation exhibition from 10th to 13th. And, and some, somewhere it falls within the per VR course and we are also discussing the same technologies. You can see most of the technologies live, you can meet with the different company. So, we planned a, a half a day visit to Pragati Maidan on 12th afternoon, after lunch we will be moving. So, if you are available, please indicate your choice in that sheet, if you are available. So, that we will be making transport arrangements uh, according to that. If you are leaving before that. Uh, there is no, by no chance I can stop you, but you just mentioned no. But if you have a flexibility to stay for the 12th second half, uh, you will be definitely get much better idea about the automation because they have created an automation park where they are demonstrating all those videos that I have shown you, some of the things you are able to see live, right. So, you just mention your choice in that sheet uh, that will help us in planning logistics for that. Done, so all of you have uh, done this task. The basic task for an automation engineer, that is what I have listed the two things. If you know how to do this, uh, you know half of the course. So, second half, how to do that we will discuss, <laughs> fine. So, so, can I have some of the answers uh, for my understanding? Please do not copy once you have written that. Uh, first task, how, how can you do that? But uh, just one option, movement of 150 mm of 20 kg weight, yeah, what exactly you will use? Uh, so, mm -hmm. But I am saying 100 micron repeatability, yeah, so can you get with a limit switch, we will come later. Uh, any, any other option? Like what actuator you will use there? Uh, those, uh, pneumatic cylinder. Pneumatic cylinder. All of you agree with this? Pneumatic cylinder. Yes. You have a variation or you agree that with 100 micron repeatability, I am able to use pneumatic actuators to move 20 kg weight. Use a linear motor. You agree or you do not agree? You have other options. <coughs> if you have other motors. options, let us say. Linear motor. Linear motor. Linear motor. Fine. LVDT. Linear motor. LVDT is sensor. I should not go with that. I am talking about more about the actuator actually. So, if I just want to understand actuator part what exactly it can be? Linear motor or servo motor with a mm. servo, servo motor. Uh, so, if I say linear servo is one option, <coughs> can I use normal servo? Yes sir. Yes, sir. Rotary servo motor. Yes. So, if I am using rotary servo, how can I be moving it to a linear motion? Conveyor. Conveyor, one option. Stepper motor, fine, because I have not specified the speed there. Mm. See, uh, one thing that I would like to highlight here, yeah, yeah, we will come to that, it is good. Uh, see, idea is that uh, I can do uh, 25 divided by 3 using my mobile phone, I can do using my calculator in the desk 
I can do using a computer. I can do the same calculation using a supercomputer. What to get? How you will decide that? If I have to do some multiplications, some uh, calculations, what exactly you will prefer to do that? What option you will choose? If I ask you, you have to find out an option to do a multiplication or division, what exactly you will prefer? Availability. Yeah, so this point uh, most of the time we as an engineer missed. We always lost in technologies. I have shown some exciting videos, now you are more on technology part. You forget the basic economics. I can use linear servo, not a problem. Who will pay 25 lakh rupees for that? Understand the point? <coughs> See, if I am able to do a calculation using a calculator from my desk, why should I buy a computer for that? So economics is most important part whenever you are going to design a system, whenever you are, see, in this room it is fine, you can say any option because uh, I can understand you are coming from a very strong technical background. But whenever you approach an industry or whenever you approach a company and start giving these kind of options, he said, he said that is the door for the automation engineer in my, my company, <laughs> you are not no more required. So, because you have not think about an economical way and option to suggest, same task we can do by multiple ways, means are there, different means are there. So, we need to find out an optimum uh, in terms of functionalities, in terms of cost, right? So, we will discuss all those design approaches when we come to that. But this part should always be at the top. See, when we are talking about automated systems, we are not always designing for making a research system. We are not making a research machine always. Most of the automation technologies nowadays that you can see are in use in industry. So we should always keep the cost as the top priority, fine. So then, then it should always come to your mind for a particular task, what exactly if I am just proposing something, can I have a better and a low cost option for doing the same. So now can I get an answer for a low cost option for doing this task? Pneumatic. As he has mentioned, lead screws. Pneumatic. Fine. So lead screw can convert rotary to linear mm -hmm. motion. Mm -hmm. Fine. So this <coughs> is fine. Any idea about the lead screw cost of 150 millimeter? Bomb or the square? Five to ten thousand rupees. Five to ten thousand rupees. So ball screw or the square? Normal, frame? normal. See, I, uh, do you need a ball screw here? No. And and do you need a uh, normal lead screw can work? No, no. Lead screw can. Lead work. screw is fine. Yeah. So so lead screw normal cost five to ten thousand. And I have already mentioned the cost of a linear servo. Linear servo is in few lakhs. That's fine. So lead screw you have finalized. That's an option that I can convert a rotary motion into a linear motion. How you generate the rotary motion in this case? Now you have a lot of choice for rotary motion. Can you just give me an optimum choice? Simple motor. Step you can use stepper motor. Stepper motor. Stepper motor. Simple motor. There is no simple motor. <coughs> 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 like this. Yeah. You have to identify. If I go in the market, give me a simple motor. Nobody will give me. So I need to be more specific as an engineer. What exactly I am looking forward? DC motor. DC motor. Stepper motor, fine. So th th these are the two options you can evaluate and you can find. So apart from mot motor exactly what you need, how you will be controlling motor? Definitely some kind of a controller is required for that. Then you will be comparing whether the DC motor controller is optimum for me or a stepper motor controller is optimum for me, fine. So these are the options that you can exercise for the first one, fine. For the second one? But sir, 100 micron accuracy? 100 micron you lead can get with the yeah, proper the selection of a lead screw yeah, and then a stepper motor you can get there. Because I have not specified the speed. If the speed is also coming into picture then you may be thinking of a servo, right? So but having a linear servo and uh, uh, say again that is depend if you are using a lead screw and a uh, rotary servo motor or you are going for linear servo is still costly, right? So then, then it comes to that. But then you understand more or less how we can uh, fulfill this task. The second one, how can achieve that? Hydraulic jet. Hydraulic, Hydraulic jet. Yeah. So, so can I get a, a one a clue that how you immediately jump to the hydraulic? How you eliminate the other options? So now you yourself identifying the advantage of fluid power. Idea is that once you have this 
see most of the time we are using electrical <coughs> drives that you have seen in the first you can uh, achieve with that. But second example very clearly uh, help us in identifying the drive part and the control part because there is a role of a fluid power and fluid power is still in, in use in industry. Electrical drives are trying to take up but then they cannot in certain cases right. So I, I am sure that you might have written uh, by this time the options for or the solution for both the task right. Good. So you are enjoying quiz this red button, good. So let me quickly come to uh, a little more understanding about the automated systems because see these words are basically nowadays a buzz word. So I know automation, I know automated technologies. But let me go into a little bit deeper to have a better understanding on this. Uh, when I say automated system, uh, the red group of words that I have highlighted here is basically without direct participation of a human worker. So if I am trying to perform a task without direct participation of a human worker, I am saying it is an automated system. Fine. Now I am coming to be more specific as some of you have mentioned that the human being is there or not there, certain tasks to be performed by human being. But what I mean by automated system when I say system in which a process is performed by a machine without direct participation of a human worker, right. So this is the uh, simple understanding about uh, automated system and then little more class classification about the semi-automatic and fully automatic. Again these two definitions of semi-automatic <coughs> and fully automatic keep changing with time. When I say fully automatic system, 10 years before it is something different and 10 years after maybe in 2020, 25 or 30, this again it will be different. Why it is different? Because see now you go through the word here, perform a portion of work cycle. When I say semi-automatic system, it means some portion of the complete cycle of operations performed automatically by the machine. So perform a portion of work cycle is we call as semi-automatic, then it requires your intervention. So do some task in between. And when I say fully automated is again operate for extended period, One, once I use this word extended period without human in attention or human intervention. This fixed period or the, the extended period is basically keep on <coughs> changing. This extended period earlier may be few hours, then maybe uh, today it is a one shift I can say that. Maybe in future it may be few days of operation. So to what extent it does not require human intervention, we call it a fully automated system, right. I have taken a very good example over here and then again a quiz for you. I have taken a semi-automatic washing machine, I have taken a fully automatic washing machine. Now you have to apply the same knowledge that I have mentioned over a semi-automated portion of a work cycle. So can you identify those portion of work cycle that semi-automatic machine is doing? And can you identify uh, what all operation this fully automatic ma machine is taking care of? Exactly when it requires human intervention, which portion of the work cycle or what extent of operation this machine can do, fine? Uh, Dilshad give extra page. Those who want an extra page, it is there with him, here also. So you have to identify, uh, I am sure you all will be helping your wives in operating these machines. So, so you need to look at those equipments from an automation engineer perspective. When I say semi-automatic machine, what exactly I am going to get, what exactly it is performing. And, and if you can just highlight some of the inputs that it requires from an operator. Semi-automatic, what exact input you give? Water input. Water input. Water input. Water input. Water input. So you will be making water on and off. Will it go automatically off when the water fill inside the tank? No. no. You have to monitor it. Fine. Second is uh, water is one part. Second is what option you have mentioned? Timer. Wash timer. So you have to set a timer. Fine. So so that is good. Third. 
Manually yeah, shifting in between from washing to drying. Right. So that is manual operation again, right? So what part is automated then in this machine? Washing is automated because once you put clothes and water and then soap inside the uh, wash tub, it will do washing automatically based on the inputs that you are given, uh, input that you have specified, timer that you have set basically. Soaking. Soaking, correct. Right. So now you understand semi-automatic machine. Now what fully automated machine, suppose if you have to think of a fully automated, let us forget what is available in the market. If I say you have to think of a concept of a fully automated machine to be launched next year, what features you may expect out of this semi-automated components can be mixed together. So that can you highlight some of the automated machine features? Necessity of water. And, uh, so detecting the weight of clothes, that is one. So uh, detecting the weight of clothes, deciding the amount of water and amount of detergent, that is what. Is it not available in today's automated machines, fully automated machines? Okay, quantity of it. And then dirt level of clothes. Dirt level of clothes. Correct. Type of clothes, dirt level of clothes, and then drying. So as a as a user, what I expect from a, a washing machine nowadays? If I want to have a fully automated machine, what I expect? It will it will go and take clothes from my rack and then wash it and place it. No, I am expecting like that only. Iron it also, yeah, that is that's what it is. And iron it also, dry ironing everything. So it means take the complete responsibility of my clothes. I can identify a bin in my house where I can just take out the clothes and put inside it. And then after two days or next days, I will get my clothes ready. Do not you think so? Washing machine will be like this? Or, or, eh? Yes or no? Check whether it is clean properly. Eh? Check whether it is clean properly. Check whether it is clean properly. Yeah, it's it's some dirty cross are in the room, then the some alarm is there. Where? <laughs> then someone? If some dirty cross are uh, still in the room, room. some alarm is there. Good, good. Try, try to take your imagination to a next level <laughs> and think of a fully automated machine much better than what is available in the market nowadays. Let us try to have much more extended period of operation without human intervention. Try to extend, stretch it. Nowadays, it is it's only a uh, few hours of operation that machine can do automatically. Even fully automated, it requires, it says cloth is ready, take it out. Then you should always be there. And if you have a large bunch of clothes, then you have to be there in uh, near machine only because you have to load, unload, load, unload every time. Though its washing is automated, but again, loading, unloading has to be done by. Uh, Cut segregation. So from the initial stage, so uh, just try to uh, do some Google on automated laundries. Is there available? Are such laundries available around? <coughs> just just open your mind, think on it. So idea is that uh, to give you a idea, what I mean semi-automated, what I mean fully automated. Please note that in any fully automated system today available, you cannot live without human worker. There is a still an intervention, but period will keep on changing. As I have said that uh, in the washing machine, it is a few hours or few minutes, it requires your intervention again, even in the fully automated machine. Right? So later, tomorrow you can think of a system which will work for few days without human intervention. Only when the soap <laughs> and detergent is over in the machine, you can just feed it or you can have a even more better option for that also. But again, it requires your intervention only week in a week's time, a weekly intervention is required, whereas the system will be taken care of. So that is what I mean by fully automated system, right? So fully automated system never remove human worker. It requires human intervention only after a certain extended period of time. So this definition, definition should always be in our mind whenever we see fully automated. We <coughs> should not be so imaginative that fully automated means everything automated, no requirement of human being, no. It is not achieved till date, fine. Good. Uh, so you, you might have written, I think, those points uh, in this case. Now uh, let me come more, a uh, little bit more technical 
concept on this automated manufacturing systems when we talk about automated manufacturing systems uh, there are two type of uh, automation in the factories one that operate at the facility level another that operate at the support system level again that is also automation see uh, automation is also there when a sales guy get an order and log into the system and reach, reach to the production facility that is also a kind of an automation definitely it is a kind of an information technology uh, system. So, whenever we think about support system there is also a need of automation all kind of SAP technologies all kind of an uh, uh, IT options available nowadays they are also doing some kind of an automation with the flow of information in the organization. So, that is basically automation in a manufacturing support system. When we are talking about automation here, we are not talking about automation in the support system. We are talking about automation in facility, manufacturing facility, where exact operation is going on to be done on the raw material. Why? So, when we say automated manufacturing system, it operates in the factory on the physical product. The support system is not operating directly on the physical product, it is just gathering information required to produce those physical uh, products. But the, the automation that we are going to talk is basically which works on the physical product, right. And then different automated operations you might have seen in those videos as well and those who have uh, seen some of the industries they can understand there are process to be done, assembly operations are there, inspection there, different material handling options are required. So, these all are automated operations in the plant. And when I again mention this word automated reduced level of human intervention. I keep on emphasizing this word again and again so that machine will not eliminate you someday. So, you have to realize your own importance as a human being. So, as an automation engineer <coughs> we should not forget ourselves. So, if we are replacing uh, ourselves with a machine then it is more dangerous situation. So, always try to have a reduced level of human intervention not, not try to eliminate the human intervention. Right? I am sure you heard these three terms fixed automation, programmable and uh, flexible. I am not going to discuss these things because basic uh, literature you can get from the book, but I want to know from you. So, please mark A, B, C, fixed, flexible and programmable. Which one is A, which one is B, which one is C, please do that. So, I have on x axis production quantity, on y axis I have a product variety. So, which type of automation you will choose for A, B and C? Yeah, please, please no discuss, it is a quiz question, uh, do not try to give your shield to someone else. Do it on your sheet. Yeah, I am just fixed, programmable, and <coughs> flexible. There are three options. You have to uh, identify uh, A, B, C. Uh, which one you will choose for that? You understand what mean by fixed automation? Uh, just definition. I need. I don't want answer for this. I need a definition or, or some basic understanding what I mean by fixed automation. Uh, example is special purpose machines are example of fixed automation. Right? When I say programmable automation, uh, <coughs> CNC is an example of a programmable automation, fine. So, what difference you see in a, a special purpose machine and a, a CNC machine? That will it's a dedicated product one variety. One kind of it's a dedicated one for the one process. Correct. So, change is very difficult. From a fixed, if you want to change the variety of part on the machine, it is not possible. And a programmable, you change a program, you can make another part. And when I come to flexible, uh, what is the difference between programmable and flexible? Uh, flexible <coughs> yeah, see when I say production, it is basically two times involved, one is setup time, another is the actual operation time, right. So, we are trying to reduce the setup time, 
flexible automation whenever we say we try to reduce the setup time. So we can make a fast changeover, we can produce a mixed variety of parts uh, the way same machine able to make another part if some, mach some machine get breakdown or something like that. So changeover from part variety is much faster and there will be an uh, automated material handling in a flexible automation system, right. So can you just mark that I think you have already marked ABC, good. Now uh, this is an interesting one which we are holding us from a uh, long back to for discussion. Uh, human and machines, relative strength of human and machine, right. So we will try to uh, convince you that we still need human being to run automated system or you are already convinced, convinced, convinced. convinced. good. So now you have to highlight your strength that I am going to discuss now. So I will just show you a text over here and I want someone to read this. Just stand up and read this, anyone, <laughs> anyone, yeah, yeah, please. According to a research at Cambridge University, it does not matter in what order the uh, letters in a word are the only important thing is that the first and last letter be the right place. The so it can be a total mess <coughs> and you can still read it without problem. This is because the human mind does not read every letter by itself but the word as a whole. Good. So now you realize your potential. <laughs> Machine cannot read this, right. So this is something where you always find that a uh, human mind can do much more than what a machine can do, right. So, the, so based on this there is a task for you. You have to write 5 strength of human and 5 strength of machine. Please take additional seat if you want and please write your name on all the sheets that you are using. <coughs> you should be very clear where exactly you need human being and where exactly you need machines. As a, as a automation expert or as an automation engineer, you should always be very clear about these two facts. Has Hey Zafar, pani ka kya hua? Sir, pani to lake rakh diya. Mujhe, mujhe de do glass. Ah, tick tick. Just tick. Ek do bottle na, kewal do teen bottle andar lake rakh diya. Speaker jo bhi hoga na, usko jala badi ke. So uh, can I get first human strength? One by one, one by one. We'll just, just which one? Decision making. So machines are not capable of making decision. Not sometime. You should. You need to identify what time. See okay. that is. You should be more specific. Changing plans. Plan A or plan B. Right. One is decision making but in certain situations, what are those situations where you find machines are finding difficult to make a decision or take a decision. But can you think that human being can think about the situation that they have not gone through earlier? 
as you have said that you have certain experience, certain knowledge, certain understanding, you always take decision based on that knowledge or there is something else. Prior knowledge and intuition. Intuition, he used a very interesting word intuition. Are you taking decision by intuition? At times, yes. At certain times, but that involved a lot of risk. Yeah. Six cents. Six cents. <laughs> nice, nice term coming out. Uh, when designing sense. scientific product, we don't go by this. Hmm. So designing, why, why we are not going by this? Because we have ability to think. It means that you are, you are yourself accepting that the decision made by the sixth sense or intuition is not always correct. Fine. Hmm. So let let me give a much better answer for this. Decision making in what situations? Machines are not capable to do that. Machine can optimize, we can write a very good optimization algorithm and a program the machine to do so. Yes. Creative thinking uh, cannot do Yeah, creative thinking that is what I can uh, write this. Creative thinking. Discrimination good. for right or wrong. Discrimination of right or wrong is again a very dangerous thing. Because everybody's uh, perception is different for that. Humans can use gestures to signal something. Yeah, uh, uh, use gestures, but nowadays lot of gesture based devices are coming. Yes. Threat to human being? <laughs> huh? Use gestures. Compliance Fine. control. But how this uh, use of gesture helps? Can you just uh, visualize let's the situation in a plant? Let us say we are handling a patient hmm. who cannot <coughs> hear, uh -huh. you can simply tell him come this side uh -huh. and he start coming. Correct. Medical handling. Machines also these days gestures, for example, we talk of a wheelchair, hmm. gesture based wheelchairs are coming very yes. That is what I am saying that, see, no, it has see uh, uh, Few of them. if we yes. take, uh, use gesture as a strength of human being, uh, maybe machine will be taking over in next 5 years or 10 yes, years. Maybe. Even yeah, yeah. So, I need much more better strength that cannot be uh, taken over by machine next 25 years or 30 years or so. Human emotions? Emotions. emotions. But yes. is it uh, 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 strength or weakness? I always get this answer uh, in my class also, emotions and, and I am talking about only strength. <laughs> so, we cannot take emotions as a strength. If machine get emotions, they will not work today. <laughs> Let us have a break, we get tired from last shift operation. So, we do not have machines to do that, <laughs> otherwise we will be losing that. So, emotions I cannot consider as a strength. Uh, please come out with more. Uh, compliant control. Compliant control, uh, can you elaborate more for others understand? Let us say to handle opening a drawer, uh, ho holding a door. So, you mean uh, better uh, actuators? Constraint based uh, motion, uh, yeah, constraint yeah. control. Uh, motions. But again, uh, you think machines are not able to do that? Yeah. Uh, they may not be able to do for next 30 years also? Maybe next Just point. think on, just think of next 30 years. So, then we can encourage. Encourage, motivate. But then I think that is also part of emotions, not so. Can you talk about the de degree of freedom in control, for example, in movement, I guess humans are more uh, control over the degree Adaptive, of freedom. adaptive, yes. Uh, this, this point is more important, uh, adaptation. Adaptation. Adaptive. adaptive. Repeatability of a work. Machine can do much better repeatability of work. <coughs> adaptive. Anything else? So, do human some other job simultaneously. Multitasking. 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 Like like <laughs> <laughs> Again, I am very happy to listen the same answer I got in my class this semester. Multitasking and I always say that please do not do multitasking in my class. <laughs> because physically you are doing something here and mentally you are somewhere else. <laughs> do not do that kind of multitasking <laughs> and it is always dangerous in all situations. Even in factory, even in industry also, if you are just thinking yes, of social problems, home problems, girlfriend problems in a factory, <laughs> <laughs> you may end up in doing something disastrous. So, that, that cannot be a strength, I should say. <laughs> if I am concentrated and focused, I will be able to do only one task at a time and that is more uh, useful for me. Do not you think so? That is the strength. If you are claiming to be multitasking, ki main akbar padta hon, chai bide bide. 
खाना भी खाता हूँ तो मैगजीन पढ़ते हुए बट दैट इज नॉट गुड ऑलवेज बट सर सपोज देर इज चांसेस ऑफ फायर सो यू कैन ऑफ द स्विच मेन स्विच लाइक दैट हाँ हाँ so but but we can have a uh, automated systems for that also whenever there is a fire uh, just yeah, yeah detectors are there they can take a decision and they, and and we can have many systems for handling that some are for temperature some are for smoke some are for some other they can immediately take an action also you can just spray water uh, make the extinguishers on and so, so many things can be possible with the help of machines But it's okay. Anything. See, machines are much cheaper than human being. I can deploy many machines around, many sensors around. What's the problem in that? Then you need to go to meditation in that. <laughs> 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 then you do just please, one. Please give me time. more strength of human being. Uh, we don't want to eliminate with that right. part of it. Research and reinvention. Hmm? Research and reinvention. Research and reinvention. So, uh, the, that we have written the creative thinking creative thinking, yes. thinking we have written yeah uh, correlation uh, correlation correlation correlate yeah. is uh, i'm just seeing a picture hmm. i'm wondering what is that person doing hmm. on top of so much of automation hmm. so he's probably looking at all data and then looking out for things which a machine would not be Okay. Nee, but machine can process multiple information simultaneously what's yet wrong with that yet there is a role for that person So that's what I'm trying to understand. Team what role, role he is playing there? Team. If I have to take a decision from multi-screen data coming in front of a uh, uh, me, I can deploy a system which will do that. What's the need of an a person sitting over there? There is a role of discovery which a machine will not do. Uh, to give it a program. Hmm. See, at the end of the day, an hmm. automation system is programmed by a human machine. Hmm. so whatever has been thought of hmm. as intelligent okay. as possible is there see uh, but you are not looking out for something yeah. more you are correct by the correct so so uh, that's good point actually <coughs> that is what i just want to see sometimes as you have seen that the the text that he had read earlier right some yeah. kind of an incomplete picture or hazy picture if i just produce in front of you you will be able to identify that still machines are not so even incomplete information is available Mach human being can take a decision machine always require a complete information to take a decision right sometimes uh, uh, you give a syntax error in that at that time huh. you give some type of error huh. so some machine we give error but that doesn't help us it's yeah. basically it has to understand mm -hmm. what i am just trying to communicate second thing is unexpected uh, stimulus something happened unexpected see if i have place some sensors around and something happen beyond what i have programmed these sensors for unforeseen circumstances, unforeseen circumstances. Right, right. you can take a decision immediately in this room and then just act according to that even you have not programmed for that so machines cannot do that some un unexpected so these are the something i will just like to uh, highlight here uh, human beings also have the ability to use multiple resources <laughs> For example, unforeseen, we call up somebody. <laughs> correct, correct. <coughs> that correct. So if I just go one by one, sense unexpected stimuli. That is one point I have just mentioned there. Develop new solutions to problems. <coughs> machine cannot do. Machine will always use the same solution way that you have programmed. It. Right? Adapt to changes. You have identified that uh, correctly. Go with abstract problems that are you have not experienced that earlier, but still yeah. you are able to go with those those abstract thinking part. That is still a strength of human being. Generalize from observations. Learning basically, though people are trying to have machine learning nowadays, but still they are much far. As I mentioned, the next thirty fifty years they cannot reach human beings' capability. So generation generalize from observation. If I experience something i immediately generalize ki aisa hi hota hai so that that those observations basically that matters learn from experience so learning is definitely a much better strength of human being make difficult decision based on incomplete data so these are the strength we are still machines are, are lagging behind and and they cannot replace human being i can safely assume next 50 years <coughs> i can i may be wrong technologies are moving so fast but right now i can <coughs> have a safe assumption in this case right can you write strength of machines now 
So, we would like to know what strength machine is having that you are not having and you are looking for automated uh, repetitive systems. Repetitive kind of work without fatigue. fatigue. Without, without fatigue. fatigue. Precise control. Correct. Uh, physical strength. So, let me just have this machine. So, machines have much more physical strength than you. Second, fatigue is not there. So, repetitive task machine can do much better. Yeah, fatigue, I mentioned this, so there will be no fatigue. So, and then precision. Correct. Can work in hazardous condition. Yeah. Can work in hazardous environment. Correct. Anything else? Availability. Availability, yeah. 24 by 7 by 20. Someone said 365, 24, 7. Working without yeah. any error. Correct. So, 65 into 24 by 7. And you can multiply n number of years. <laughs> then, next. Limited to team work. Can you think of a, a, a some kind of a data processing? <coughs> Capability of our machines are much more than human being nowadays. Speed of operation. Speed of operation. Speed of operation. So it means that you have more strength in machines than you. power. Huh? Speed of operation. That is uh, that is the reason that you are all lover of automation. Eh? You mm -hmm. like more machines than human beings. <laughs> and and few more. Economical. Economical. Mm -hmm. yeah. Initial cost. Initial cost. In the long run, we can say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any any strength of a machine? Strike nigger. Memory. Strike nigger. Uh, so emotions. No emotions is a strength of machine. <laughs> no emotions is a strength of machine. So we cannot say emotion is a strength of human being. Yeah. Honest. Honest. Very good. Yeah. Managing the human resources is concerned. I guess emotions is an advantage of the human because if your boss is emotionless, he'll not understand the condition of his subordinate. That will lead to I am not saying that uh, because there is a dilemma on that. I am not saying that emotion is not a strength. No, no, it is there. Case of, in case of human uh, emotion, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in case of human being, emotion is definitely a strength if it has been used for. If I am motivating people to learn this course, <laughs> it is good. <laughs> but, but then I can use my emotions in a negative way also to create a strike in the factory. Yes, so, that is what I am saying. I am talking about the strength. I am not saying that if it is a 50-50 or 40-60, let us take it apart. It is not a part of the strength. It can be a strength if it has been used for. That is the point. Instead of emotions, <coughs> human beings have multiple sensing. Mm -hmm. For example, taste, mm -hmm. feel, mm -hmm. smell. But sir, we can have those many sensors sense with the machine. What is the problem? You can't have. For example, you uh -huh. can't remotely transmit smell. Uh -huh. See, if I am sitting in a control room, uh -huh. you know, so Before the smoke detector goes off, mm -hmm. very often human beings can get the feeling something is burning. You mean there is a lack of those those sensitive sensors, sensitive maybe? Uh, sensors uh, uh, which are not till now do uh, so But but I answer uh, planning for next fifty years that nobody should yeah, eliminate yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 point here, yeah. uh, like you were saying about the smell. Earlier there used to be tea tasters. Now, there is a lot of work going on basically in developing smell sensors. Yeah, yeah. Correct. I know this is its name. So, work is going on. Classification of smell, that is what he means, is basically classification of smell. There is so much variety around that it is it has not been attempted till now. People are trying, it has not been developed till now. Reproduce that smell. Correct. Re reproduce that smell is again, smell, much yes. sensing is even fine. 
But still, if you want to get a, a smell of a rose or a, a samosa outside, you cannot, <laughs> you cannot create it unless you have a physical samosa here. <laughs> so good. So uh, let me just uh, uh, list those points, though we have written uh, quite a good points over here. Uh, so perform repetitive tasks, store large amount of data, retrieve data from memory much faster than human being can. We still have to think on. Uh, perform multiple tasks simultaneously is a strength of machine. I can do drilling and turning simultaneously. I can include more operations simultaneously. Yeah. So that is there. Apply high force and power that we have already taken care of. Uh, perform simple computations quickly. So that is what the strength of it. And make routine decisions quickly. So based on logic, clear logic, machine can do much better, uh, take a much better decision, much faster, much faster. If you have to give a simple logic, even that logic can be one lakh logic that it has to analyze, it can do in few seconds or milliseconds nowadays. And we still take time for that. So, so what, I think, yeah. What about the real-time processing? Uh, is it the humans? I think human being Real-time processing, exactly what you mean, real-time processing? Real-time processing means, uh, suppose you have some smell uh -huh. in a setting like this moment, uh -huh. it will take some time to sense and process it. But, uh, response time, you mean response, response time. time. Yeah, exactly. So first of all, sensor should be sensitive enough, enough to detect yeah. that and after that, the system should be fast enough to take a decision or process that information. That is what you mean? That's also continuous development and now therefore sensor also. Correct. That is what I am saying that see, those technologies people are already working and then uh, let us not make those as a strength. No, 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 sensors are there. Yes. On its communication, hmm. you want to put at the <laughs> machines, <Yes>. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> machines, definitely. But sir, one question is yeah. there. The fatigue, fatigue strength of human being is much more than machine. If you think so. No, how, because how machine can is heavy load is there, there is some chances that after lifting. No, you have to design the machine for that. If you are not designed properly, then definitely it will be a failure. But we cannot design a human being for a load much higher than what he can handle. There is again a limit on that. There is again a capacity limit of a human being that I can apply that much force only. That's Beyond that, yeah. depends on material to material. What is <coughs> huh, definitely. See, that, that aspect is of a design part actually. So, on how you are choosing those materials, how you are designing that particular right. element of a machine. Right? But in, in case of a human being, you have a physical limit. You cannot go beyond that. That is the point. When we say physical strength or when we say, uh, uh, apply high force and power, uh, it is all depend how we can design a system for that, right? Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>